Hello and welcome. How are you doing today? I'm Diane Crampton, Tiger's founder. And in my last live event, I shared information on the research and validation process that went into building the Tiger's collaborative leadership and group development system. In today's live event, I'm going to look at how employee behavior that results in drama impacts business profitability and what to do about it, especially when improved collaboration is the goal. So let's get going. Have you ever asked yourself, what is wrong with some of the folks you work with? <laughs> Perhaps so-and-so trash talks other employees. Then there is this free-flowing gossip, and it seems like someone is always on the outs, or perhaps someone else is downright rude and bullies people to get their way. Then there are the passive aggressive folks that won't do anything unless you tell them what to do. Perhaps you or someone you know is getting tired of all that drama and thinking about leaving the organization when things turn around. So what is the financial impact of drama in the workplace? Where does drama come from in the first place? And how do you become more collaborative and mutually supportive when drama is present? And why is it so difficult to confront the drama for some and not for others? These are the questions I'm addressing today. So let's start with the financial impact of drama in the workplace. Harvard researchers report that employees who have been on the receiving end of drama and incivility report the following. 48% intentionally decrease their work effort. 38% intentionally decrease the quality of their work. 80% lost work time worrying about the incident. 66% said that their performance declined. 78% said their commitment to the organization declined, and 25% admitted to taking frustration out on customers. So looking at these percentages, the reductions in each of these areas have a financial impact on the bottom line. So how much? According to the Society for Human Resource Management, the financial cost is as much as $223 billion in lost revenue over the past five years, and not including the pandemic years of 2020 and to date in 2021. That is money that does not end up in employees' pockets or in your community or in growth and innovation. Talented people won't put up with it. They leave. And in April 2021, McKinsey and company estimated that one in four employees will be leaving to work elsewhere once business opens back up in a more normal way. So to bring it down to the employee level, the financial impact of workplace drama costs about $14,000 per employee in lost productivity and time according to the Sherm report. So where does drama come from? Workplace drama comes from human actions that are emotionally driven that cause friction and conflict in the workplace. And here's an example. I first became familiar with the Cartman Drama Triangle when I was researching what makes work groups high functioning and studied business, education, and psychology group dynamic research. I found the Cartman Drama Triangle in the social psychology research. The Cartman Drama Triangle is a social model of human interaction proposed by Stephen Cartman. The triangle maps a type of destructive interaction that can occur among people in conflict. The triangle is composed of three human roles that are responsible for drama. They are victim, rescuer, and persecutor. The victim's mindset is poor me. Victims feel powerless. They often feel abused and that their needs and wants are denied or flat out ignored. They are often bullied by others or perceive that they are bullied by others. They are employees who feel disrespected. So they tell their friends about it. Then what happens? The rescuer mindset is poor you. They fear feeling unneeded and they work to remove your pain. 
These are the knights in shining armor that disempower you by doing things for you and restrict your personal growth and maturity that comes through struggle. They are also the folks who spring into action when they hear complaints from the victims. Then what happens? The persecutor mindset is that it is all your fault. They project blame and try to dominate others. Their actions are to tear others down. They bully, intimidate, and often become quite combative when challenged. Where it gets interesting is when the victim feels smothered by the rescuers. They often become the persecutor, which makes the rescuer feel victimized, and rescuers don't like to feel powerless, so they often switch to persecution too, resulting in one or the other feeling victimized. And as you can imagine, all three roles flip back and forth, creating more and more drama. When the rescuer feels unappreciated for their valid efforts to save you, they often feel victimized and not wanting to feel powerless, they flip to the persecutor very quickly. The loser of the ensuing persecution war gets to be the victim and the drama continues. So how do you become more collaborative and mutually supportive when drama is present and change it? Basically, you stop it through personal accountability. You become more accountable by learning new skills that bring these roles to closure. For example, the victim becomes the creator. The skills and mindset required include assertiveness skills, problem solving skills, and a mindset that shifts from poor me to what they are grateful for. And as creator, they learn and educate themselves and become accountable for their experience. And like Eleanor Roosevelt said, no one can make you feel inferior unless you let them. The rescuer transforms into a coach. They learn how to ask great questions to help a victim solve their own problem without making suggestions. And they offer clear support, but stay out of solving problems. The mindset becomes everyone has the strength to solve their own problem and the skills they adopt are inquiry skills. The persecutor becomes a challenger. They develop active and empathetic listening skills and learn to set clear expectations and suggest changes rather than order them. To avoid becoming the rescuer, first ask the question what the employee has already thought about. Then you can easily suggest other things to look into if you see a problem with their thinking. They also check in from time to time to see how things are going, but not so much that they become micromanagers. So that is on the personal side of drama. On the group side of drama, Tiger's Group Norm Facilitation corrects it. Tiger's licensed independent consultants and internal HR professionals offer group behavior norm facilitation that teaches leaders and employees the behaviors that build agile cross-functional teams and work cultures and behaviors that predictably cause drama and team breakdown. From this, the group is facilitated to develop group behavior norms that are specific to that group that will minimize conflict and misunderstandings the most. With a growing number of Tigers qualified consultants in the United States and Canada, group behavior norm facilitation engages employees and leaders to identify and be accountable for behavior that builds a constructive, profitable, and collaborative team and workforce. And once group behavior norms are determined, the behavior is easy to identify in daily interactions and can be measured for performance coaching and performance reviews going forward. But it doesn't stop there. Group behavior norms can also be used for performance related questions in employee interviews. And they can be also used to onboard and train new employees so that what is decided upon is sustainable as people leave and join the organization. Because behavior norms are seen daily and how people treat one another and the organization as a whole, everyone in the organization must be responsible for them 
And the best news is that once determined, it shortens the time new teams spend in conflict and confusion, which is a real advantage for any manager who builds a cross-functional team for complex system problem solving or innovation. This frees managers to actually grow the organization rather than dealing with repeated drama and all the financial failures I mentioned earlier. Now, when it comes to why it is so difficult to confront the drama for some and not for others, it comes down to relearning how to communicate effectively and learning where your personal boundaries start and stop. That is on the personal level. And this is true for both leaders and employees. On the group level, a strong workplace culture is created through intentional strategies and behaviors modeled by leaders throughout every level of the organization. And this means that what leaders do or don't do is often copied by other employees. The bottom line is that building high performance employee teams that are drama free does not evolve by chance. On the part of employees, it requires employees to learn and assimilate communication skills that, quite frankly, will improve every relationship in their lives. On the part of leaders, it requires intention and commitment on the part of leaders to build high-functioning departments and teams that serve the roles, goals, and relationships of the organization in a drama-free way. These core business functions are all connected by behavior. And when that behavior reinforces the Tiger Six principles of trust, interdependence, genuineness, empathy, risk resolution, and success, and are based on your group behavior norm agreements, work becomes happier and more respectful as a place to be. Talent retention goes up and distractions are reduced so more gets done in a more profitable way. As the drama triangle flips back and forth, it spreads from one team member to another. When group norms or behavior are known and endorsed by employees at all levels of operation, behavior and operations improve. Tiger's licensed independent consultants can facilitate this transformation or Tigers can teach an employee on your team to do the same in Tigers manager as facilitator training. Either way, drama drives toxic workplace behavior and it can be cured with time, attention, and training. The question I'm addressing in my next live event is how to get training and performance management to stick in a way that improves skills and attitudes in a measurable way. I hope you will be around to see it. Now with live events, and as you know, once they are over, that's it, they're gone. So to stay in the loop, to be in the know and not miss out, you can join me on LinkedIn or Facebook where I schedule the event in advance Or if you don't frequent these social networks daily, you can subscribe to our newsletter where subscribers learn the date and time and topic discussed as well as receiving playback links. So in respect for everyone's time, I'm at the end of today's topic. So thank you for showing up and thanks for joining my heart's desire to improve the world of work one great team at a time. See you next time.